Welcome to another episode of Beyond Cheers, the Detective Gomez Files. I'm your host, Detective Gomez. And ladies and gentlemen, today we have a special guest on our show today, Mike Gomez, all the way from Hollywood, California. And today he's going to talk about what's it like to be in Hollywood. You know, we see it on TV a whole lot. People constantly, constantly going to Hollywood for singing, dancing, uh, all kinds of things. But he's going to tell us his experience being in Hollywood right now. And he's also my uncle. So let's talk about that also, right? Uh, Uncle Mike, how are you doing today? I'm great, son. How are you doing? It's fantastic. Uh, fantastic. Such a pleasure to be here today. Thank you for inviting me, uh, Danny, to to be on your show, your podcast. It's very yeah. exciting. I, very I, happy, I, and I'm very, very proud of you and the detective uh, uh, agency that you have. It's incredible. And, you, know, you know, I'm constantly, constantly trying to spread the word out. You know, in different ways, different platforms, YouTube, podcasting, blog, all kinds of ways. And there's, there's, and also like you know, share today, share about you, talk about my uncle. You know, people, I don't understand how hard it is just to get into Hollywood and how to um, get there and stay there. So mm. talk, talk a little bit about your, you know, a, a few minutes about how you got from Dallas to, you know, Hollywood. You know, it 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 really is a journey, uh, like you said, uh, kind of like you said it, and and obviously my. My destiny was to be a, a, an actor, and and my goal is always to be a, a working actor, you mm -hmm. know. And I've been very blessed in that the last, uh, God, it's honestly been almost 50 years. I'll be next year celebrating my 50th year as a, as a working actor, which is great. I'm, I've been very, very blessed. Started out uh, at the Dallas Theater Center, where I studied uh, and and graduated from the academy there mm -hmm. and uh after a couple of years there and and graduating from the academy i was ready to work mm -hmm. the, the the training was so intense and so great and i think uh i, I think uh, uh uh the director paul baker who was then the director of the theater uh company of the academy and uh you know they had confidence in me to to bring me in and give me a scholarship actually to wow. be a, okay. yeah to, to give me a scholarship to uh to train as an actor and after i got out like i said the training was so intense that i was ready to work and uh got into a couple of of union equity plays e equities okay. theater union and after that i i got a a, a TV show, a series regular role on a new series for children that was being produced in Austin, Texas. Okay. I auditioned for that and uh, ended up working on that show for four years. The show was called Garras Colendas, which is a I long, name, yeah, a long yeah. name, but it's actually named uh, after a town in South Texas. Mm -hmm. The executive producer, Aida Barrera, uh, was from that town, and so she named this this fantasy town uh, bilingual educational PBS show that uh, and so it it that show basically gave me my training in in uh, television uh, so we did it for four years 140 episodes and then after that I, I kind of had to make a decision uh, after four years on the show and it ended uh, what I really wanted to do whether I wanted to can you continue doing theater or go into television and film and i really really love television so i decided to move to la uh as opposed to moving to new york and okay. once i got to la then of course i started you know to to hit, you know hit the ground as as a as a new actor that that nobody knew uh and did all the rounds you know i had to get an agent first agent. And, and yeah i got an agent and then i was as I've, I've been very very lucky and blessed like i said and uh, after three months, uh, I, I got I got an agent, and then after three months after that, I got my first commercial, and uh, so, you know started doing things, uh, plays and whatnot to get showcased. And at the same time, of course, I was uh, doing odd jobs, basically office work, okay. to make ends meet. Uh, and it's good to have a backup plan as well. Right, right. Yeah. The, the, uh, let me ask you a question, Uncle Mike. Sure. The, um, now, now you had some formal training right as far yeah. as um learning how to act and oh yeah training on how to uh, is because people don't you can't I mean, you can just move to la but you have to get an agent too so an agent's got to be able to 
say, I, look, look, guys, I got a new actor in town. He's bilingual. Right. He can sing. He can dance. He yes. can do this. He can do this. He can do different things. What are you guys looking for? What do you need for your production? Yes, you do have to have you have to have an agent uh, uh, because, well, that's the first goal, and that's actually what I had to do. You know, within as soon as I got there, I started looking for an agent, and I was lucky in that within three months I got I got my first agent. It helped that I was already union because union, all the important work is all union. You know, okay. so that's what you kind of want to do. Uh, Screen Actors Guild, uh, uh, an after American Federation of Radio and Television Artists. It's one union now, mm -hmm. uh, but all the important work is all union. So eventually you're going to have to go union. So I was lucky in that I joined the union here in Texas. Mm -hmm. And and then when I got to California, uh, I was ready union. So, yeah. so okay. the the agents were more likely to take me than not because I, I could already like work right so I, I went ahead and did our jobs and whatnot uh, until i got my what, what i call my big break which was uh being cast in the play called zoot suit which became a huge huge hit in la yeah a play at the mark taper forum and then uh um I was in the show for a couple of years in LA and then we went to Broadway with it right. went back to LA and, and did the film for Universal and that kind of launched my career in in LA and you know thank God I've been working ever since in different projects and movies and TV shows and other plays and and whatnot and just commercials as well and just been busy you know thank I got God. a question for you yeah. Mike now let's talk about Zoot Suit for a second um, okay. now Zoot Suit I recognize some of the actors. You know, when you did the play, uh, and then you took it to Broadway, okay, yeah. New York, were the same, uh, I guess, what's up? Let's just say actors. Did all the same people get transferred to Broadway? Mm -hmm. Did you no. have to find new people? Well, yes. Y yes and no. And then, no, and then, and then from the play in Broadway, did those people make the film? No. It's, no. As a matter of fact, I'd say maybe of the original cast mm -hmm. maybe 20 percent of the actors uh in the original version of zoot suit ended up in the film and uh ended up on broadway and what happened is that the film went through a, a metamorphosis sort of okay. different different versions or, or, or okay. of it the first version that we did was actually originally produced as a work in progress it was only supposed to last two weeks and it okay. did but the the reception the response from the community was so intense uh when they heard about the play that what it was about what it was about was the 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 sleepy lagoon murders in 1943 that that a group of 22 mexican-american youths were tried for the death of one of, of one one guy uh and they were tried in mass they weren't individual trials is the right. first time that had ever happened so very very famous case in la history especially la la mexican-american history mm -hmm. and so it it became like a flashpoint uh for uh mexican-american activism in the united states mm -hmm. but this particular case and so that's what the play was about so when the community in the uh, of la especially the latinos in la found out that there was this play about them. They wanted all, they all wanted to go see it. And Mark did perform. Mark did perform is like, you know, the top of theater in in in, uh, in LA. And the day that the box opened, the, the box office uh, office opened, they received 3000 calls for tickets. And this was just the, the two week production. So it became like this runaway hit, right? So it was so popular that it came back as the opening show opening play of their season and it ran for two years in la in the meantime it, they decided to take it to broadway wow. and uh so there was different levels or versions of the play uh and i was lucky enough to be in, in oh, all, right. all of them yeah. all of them yeah the, the the play in la the different versions in la the the broadway production and then the film and, so we and, have cast changes yeah and, and you and uh, edward james Olmos, right uh, yeah were, eddie and uh, I, popular, yeah we did eddie eddie and i were some of the ones that that were uh 
lucky enough to be a part of it. And the the the, the great thing was that that Zoot Suit itself as a production launched this whole new generation of Latino actors, mm-hmm. Mexican American and Cuban and whatnot. Just it just launched our careers. Which right, right, because because I've seen some of the um, some of the actors that were in the movies. One of them was in a, a movie with Richard Gere, or the the Navy movie. Where, oh yeah, Tony Plana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony Plana. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tony Plana. And, and then there was another one. Was in Scarface. He was a uh, uh, Pepe Serna. He was a uh, Tony Montana's brother. The yeah. guy killing in the shower. With, with yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's Pepe Serna. Yeah, yeah. yeah so he's from so, Texas uh, too. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. seeing quite a few of the people from Zoot, like you said, spread out and be able to get, you know, acting jobs and other. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we we're, were able to have a career, thank God. You mm-hmm. know, thanks to Zoot Suit and and also thanks to you know what uh, I, I forgot to mention and I think it's important for me to mention when I first came to Hollywood, there was an organization by uh, founded by a. A really famous actor, I think, which a lot of people probably know, should know, Ricardo Montalban. Oh, yeah. Ricardo Montalban was a huge star in the 1950s, musicals, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70 TV shows. He was Mr. O'Rourke in Fantasy Island. Yes, I remember. Yes, so Ricardo Ricardo founded this organization in 1970 Mm -hmm. uh, that was to to change the image of Latinos in the entertainment industry. Because before okay. that, you had a lot of stereotypic uh, characters that, that were mm-hmm. like all over okay. movies, TV, whatever. Uh, and so Ricardo founded this organization, not only that, but also as an entryway for Latinos to come in and be able to, to work in Hollywood, yeah. showcase their talents and plays and, and whatnot. So Ricardo was, was uh, responsible for founding it. The one that continued the work though, was as president, the main person was Jerry Velasco, as okay. president of Nosotros. Oh, Jerry, okay. yeah, and so Jerry, as president, uh, kept the organization going and founded what was considered to be the Latino Oscars, mm-hmm. the Nosotros Golden Eagle Awards, okay. which, which is no longer around, but but it lasted like for 20 years. So through that organization, when I came to Hollywood, I was already starting to be in plays and showcase and whatnot. And until work. Zoot Suit came, yes, and then Zoot Suit, I get into Zoot Suit, just made it, you know, a little bit bigger. Well, I mean, but it also speaks for the talent yourself because there's dancing and then you got to know your lines and there's all kinds of there's the choreograph dancing right. in Zoot Suits. It's a lot of work. So I've seen the movie thousands of times. Yeah, but but there's a lot of work into it, also. Yeah, yeah, you do. It, 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 it's very challenging, uh, of course. I mean, uh, you know, any, any, any time you're on stage performing, it's very challenging. I mean, you have to, it's a profession. I mean, I, I always tell people that want to get into the business that you have to train. You know, you have to be as serious about it as as uh, wanting to be a doctor or training to be a doctor or right. a lawyer. It takes that kind of dedication and training. And if you don't have, that desire to train that way then don't even try it you know okay. there's too many people out there that are serious about the business and uh they want to dedicate their life to it and that's your competition you know so you got to be not only well trained and whatnot but you have to be dedicated you have to take care of yourself when you're in a play an equity play uh, eight performances a week okay so you're performing tuesday wednesday thursday friday two performances on saturday two on sunday so it's a two and a half hour play. So you're going to be exhausted by the time the week's over, and you got to have that stamina. So you got to take care of yourself, right? You got to be in shape, yeah. Yeah, you have to be in shape and take care of yourself. So you can, you know, give it your 150 percent and and give a great performance every time. So it takes a lot of dedication, is what I'm trying to say. You know, so right. you're right. Well, let's talk about some of your performances while we're at it. How's that? Mm. Okay, sure. <laughs> now I've got a couple here. I mean, there's lots. I mean, I looked up your Wikipedia page, and you got a long list. I'm just going to pick out a couple here. Okay. You were on the border with Jack Nicholson, right? Yeah. And yeah. What a what a that was fun. Yeah, yeah. and you play a uh, coyote. I did actually. I played, I, I played this really bad guy. 
Yeah. Uh, and with sunglasses, it <laughs> was sunglasses exactly, and it was it was fun. I ended up spending three months in in uh, El Paso, mm -hmm. uh, and it, I, I loved working with Nicholson. Jack was he's an incredible actor. He was great to work with. Is he pretty serious uh, on set? Is he pretty? I mean, no messing around. When he, when yeah, there? no, he's pretty. It's funny because Jack would come in and and you know we'd all be there like at eight o'clock in the morning or whatever whatever time our call was getting set up or whatever jack would come in about 11 o'clock and <laughs> just kind of he'd saunter in and kind of look around and goes okay he goes um, what are we doing today you know he was just like real chill you know which is cool you know but but i got to tell you every time i saw him on camera and he and i had a couple of scenes uh together you know um uh, the camera loves Jack. There's something yeah. about Jack that you just, it, it just loves him. And there are, there are actors like that, that you look at, you look and you go, wow, this camera just love them. They come yeah. across really great. And Jack's one of those actors. And not only that, but he's an, he's an amazing actor. Of course, as everybody knows, you know. Did he, did he have to do a lot of like retakes or anything like that? Or did he, did he knock it out the first two times, three times? I think probably like three times, three mm -hmm. or four times. Jack wasn't one to do a whole lot of takes. You know, not into the border, not with us anyway. <laughs> but yeah, he didn't do it over and over and over. We our director was Tony Richardson, and Tony Richardson got a couple of Oscars for the movie Tom Jones so that was back in the '60s, mm -hmm. and, and he was Vanessa Redgrave's husband. Uh, so he was very well known, English, very very nice guy, but just you know, kind of a serious kind of person, you know. But but uh, Jack and he were friends, and I think Jack ended up doing the film because. Tony had asked him, okay. right? So, uh, but you had Harvey Keitel in the film. Yeah. You, you Warren Oates, I mean, amazing people. Warren Oates, uh, you know, all these, Valley Perrine was in it. And it was just a whole, oh, and Elpidia Carrillo. Elpidia Carrillo, who was in Blue Be Beetle, mm -hmm. uh, the mother in Blue Beetle, this was her first film that she had ever done. And uh, so she and I became very close. We've, we've been friends a long time since then. But but uh, uh, a lot of really great actors, great people, you know, that they were there. And the sweetest, kindest man was to me that I saw in the film was War Notes. Yeah. Uh, uh, just really sweet. And and I had been in, uh, in an ardent fan of his for a long time as well. So is it, is it you know, when you see big actors that you're working with and you look at them and you go, man, I, I've got to still, I got to come across like an actor. I can't be a fan. Well, that, well, you, no, you, you can kinda... still be a fan. Yeah. Yeah. That happened to me with, with, uh, Freddie Fender. Okay. okay. Freddie, yeah. Fender, Fred, Freddie and I ended up being friends, you know, we're friends for a long time. And we ended up working together in, uh, Milagro Beanfield War, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. was directed by Robert Redford, right? And and that film had uh, also a lot of a lot of actors in it. Uh, the Milagro Beanfield War. Um, Freddie was in that. He played the mayor. And Freddie and I, uh, when we first met each other, it was kind of like a mutual admiration society. He had seen me in the border because he had done the 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 song, the opening song for the film. Right. So he had seen me, so he got all excited when when he saw me, and I got excited because it was Freddie. So we just became like mutual, you know, admiration society, and became friends, and stayed friends until he passed. And what a, you know, what a wonderful, sweet, talented man he was. Well, my, my dad was a big fan of his, so I mean, he, yeah. he, uh, he, great boys. Oh, um, um, I got one here for you. Um, uh, Heartbreak Ridge. Let's talk about Heartbreak Ridge for a minute. Okay. Uh, okay. Clint Eastwood. Yes. Now in this movie, I've, you know, I've seen it. Another movie I've seen a thousand times. Just for the the lines of the movie, they're they're hilarious with the different guys, the different actors. Right. Um, there's a now you did you have to do any kind of? I know you, there's a part where uh, Clint Eastwood tells you in the movie, "Kick kick can you on this, right? Can you on this? Is that right? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Give yes. me a cadence." And then you I flip them, you flip them off <laughs> and he goes i want to stick that um he says he says hey, you'll do something with your finger goes, give i give him the thing i give the finger actually to <laughs> Valius, right he says he's gonna bite it off or something right yeah so yeah he asked me to do a cadence and and it's 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 uh um, you know very very uh 
How can I put it? <laughs> you got to watch the movie. Very adult <laughs> cadence. Yeah, it's an adult cadence. Let me put yeah. it that way. D did you have to learn how to march? Uh, oh God, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, we ended up uh, ended up two months on that film, okay. and we spent uh, two weeks in Puerto Rico, which doubled mm -hmm. for Grenada, and uh, because it's about the invasion of Grenada, Grenada how right. the Greens went in and and uh, uh liberated it after it was taken over by cuban uh, soldiers right so uh we spent uh six weeks in in uh at camp pendleton but before we actually did anything of course they had to train us right, right. so we trained we trained for about a week uh and uh th they were they were a little soft on us, but they were also kind of tough, you know. And it was great. Did you have the Did you that. have the actual Marines training on? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. It was let me put it this way. After I did the film, you know, I, I, I I'm always of the opinion of, hey, our Marines in the US are ready for anything. <laughs> you know, we hey, we got it, boy. <laughs> <laughs> now look out. You know, yeah. the uh, now you worked with Clint Eastwood. Um yes. you got quite a few scenes of him in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um how how because this is his movie uh did, did he, he he directed this did he he directed and he also he also uh wrote it, I wrote mean, it yeah. yeah yeah i mean it's his project and his production company his production company produced it now mm -hmm. he works uh exclusively with warner brothers okay. and warner brothers loves him you know if you notice uh, all all his films are under malpaso productions mm -hmm. that's his production company now he's really been an incredible filmmaker uh artist um he he's basically and this happens i think with 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 people that have been in the business for a long time is that you work with a group of people and and you start picking people that you really like and work yeah. with well so he's put together a team that he's worked with for years right and uh that's kind of uh, un un under his production company malpaso productions this production uh he produced it and then of course it's released by warner brothers right. so he's got to deal with warner brothers has for many many years and warner brother loves him because he always brings his film in a week early okay. which saves him a lot of money money so he will do clint will do definitely one or two or maybe three takes on on each scene but he's very good he's very fast it's so funny because he would he would come in and, and we'd have a scene that was in one particular scene where he wasn't in it so he'd come in and he goes okay let me see it so we do the rehearsal and then he'd say nah, it's too long he goes if uh and some people drop their lines or whatever right, right. Goes, if uh if it doesn't if it doesn't pop by the time i come back i'm gonna cut it so you know that when he came back well we popped that scene went you know the, uh, uh, um, yeah yeah we didn't want to be cut you know right because then you'd be cut out from the movie right yeah yeah, the, yeah. Um, he's tough but he's also it's funny because he he is you know he comes off tough he's got that whole demeanor and everything but there's a soft side to clint you know right. and uh he's a musician uh one one afternoon we were uh uh in between takes and there was a piano and he got on the piano just started playing the piano which is kind of cool to listen to him watch him play you know but there's there, there is a obviously like with everybody there's a soft side there and clint definitely has it you know well that's good it's good it's, not, it's nice to know that about him because he you look when i watch him on camera he, he appeared to be a, i guess a director that would be very serious about getting yeah. that done right yeah. You know, he knows exactly what he wants right yeah and he's, he's produced so many films at, you know, oh. at an old, older age el, you know older age and i still looks like when, when he shoots his film he's got a certain scene that he wants done or so 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 sudden certain things he wants a certain way and it's got to be that way right right yes yeah absolutely right. he knows exactly what he wants and it's really as, as a director he's very he's he's very uh very very smart in that and that he, he knows how long it's going to take. He knows how long he wants to do. You know what was take. He's already he's already got the film in his head completely. Right. Every shot, you know. So he knows when he when he gets it. It's usually one or two takes. You know, it's like boom. That's yeah, good. That's it. I got it. You know. And he moves on. He's he's fast. You know, in that way. But but I mean, Harper Gridge took two months. You know. Not, that's yeah. A lot of films take like six months, right? But no, he was he's very 
very very smart and saves a lot of money that way too D does he does he know his i guess he knows his lines really well when he gets on, on oh, set yeah. he oh, yeah. like this is the way it's going to go down and and, um, and, and you know when you're you shouldn't have asked another question real quick huh? go ahead yes go ahead sir uh, i think i lost you you there yeah, yeah okay. okay we're back okay how often do you go off script I mean, how often is it like, okay, this is written in a script, we're going to do it like this. Because I know there's like a guitar scene where you guys are singing and you're yelling a couple of different things. Uh, uh, I remember that scene when they go, the, the sweet, sweet is coming oh, back yeah, or something yeah. like, yes. and then, what, what's his name? Uh, Mario Van Peoples is playing the guitar, and, right. you know, and y'all just start dancing and, you know. Oh, something like that. How long would something like that take to shoot? Is that done like a oh, that was, no, We shot that. We shot that uh, in one morning. Wow. Yeah, it was fast, so it didn't take long at all. You know, Clint, 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 like I said, is very, very, very good about, you know, one or two or three takes and that's it. We're moving on, you know, <laughs> he's got it. He's got it. Yeah, no, he's, he's quite amazing as a director, really. <laughs> all right, let's we'll, talk, we'll talk about a few more here. We'll, we'll let you go for the next okay. you're, out, you're out in Hollywood and you got probably some auditions or something to do or. or... Oh, Always oh, busy, thank God. Yes. Okay, you've done some stuff, and I'm just going to mention a couple of these here. You can just talk about them briefly. If you okay. Like. Uh, TJ Hooker, uh, William Shatner, Star yes. Trek, yes. Uh, Next Generation, yes. Uh, Walker Texer, Stranger, um, right. Uh, you know Chuck Norris. I mean, uh, I mean all these actors. All yes. These big time. A lot of actors. I mean, these are big time. Actors. Yeah. I mean, Shat Shatner's probably going to go down as one of the another one of the greatest TV actors ever. You know. Or just he's just worship in the space. You know, he's been in space and back. I mean, you you've done something with William Shatner. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I was very very blessed. Uh, you know, uh, T.J. Hooker. I actually did a couple of episodes, and and uh, they're both direct. One of them was directed by 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 Bill Shatner, mm -hmm. uh, and he was he was a sweet sweet man sweet director he's a very he's you know, just a really sweet gentle calm guy you know and it uh in, in our scene we had a scene together as well uh -huh. a couple of times and uh, it was great it was great you know we we really uh it was fun he's a, he's a good person to work with yeah. star trek new generation you're an alien you know what <laughs> that's one of my favorite shows that i did and yeah. I, I played a a ferengi commanders I actually did two episodes five years apart Wow. And I'm actually one one of the very few actors, I think one of two actors in the whole series that ended up doing two different characters. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, they're both commanders. Uh, Damon, they're called Damon. Damon Loren and, and uh, Damon Tarr. Now, uh, in the first episode that I did was the first time that a Ferengi had been uh uh introduced in the series okay. so i was actually the beginning of the ferengi race oh, there you go <laughs> yeah <laughs> officially as well it's been it's been it's been uh already verified that i, I kind of started the ferengi race if you want to call it that <laughs> which was, which is fun and then five years later i get to play uh another commander ferengi commander that comes in and takes over the the enterprise but but William Shatner, this is the new generation, not the older generation. Yes, this is a new generation. Uh, William Shatner was that in it. Okay. Now I worked with like with him on TJ Hooker, yeah. On the uh Walker Texas Ranger, Chuck, Chuck Norris. Yes, Chuck Norris. He was fun. It was fun to work with. And what was great about that is that it was it, it was shot in Dallas. So I got right. to go to Dallas and you know, brought my mom in and my aunt and, and my brother in law to come see the come see the, the set there. Yeah. That visit to set while I was filming and stuff. Very nice. That was fun. Yeah, Chuck was very nice about that. Yeah. The uh, Desperate Housewives. Desperate Housewives. I got to play a priest. Okay. Uh, 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 I've played like three priests in my acting career so far. Oh. Uh, yes, I got to work with Eva Longoria, and had a scene with her. I was actually her confessor. Okay. And, and Eva, I've known, been friends you know for a long time as well before before the show before she became fam before she became famous famous yes and then get getting to work with her and you know whatnot and she's sweet she's a super sweet woman yeah now, she's still still doing a lot now she's got a tequila brand and other oh, yeah. things out just constantly moving along uh what about uh let me see here 
Ranger. Also, you did something with um, you mentioned Robert Redford at the very beginning. You, you did a movie. With him. We did Milagro Beanfield War mm -hmm. film uh, with him. He directed it, and of course, it's based on a very, very famous book. And and mm -hmm. he got he got the rights to that, and he got all these casts uh, uh, that were part of it. John Hurd was in the film. Uh, Ruben Blades was in it, of course, Freddie Fender, and and uh, uh, Christopher Walken was in it. Yeah. Uh, just a, a lot of, a lot of actors. And Christopher Walken, he's also one of my favorite actors, and it was great working with him as well. Yeah, super, super sweet man as well. Uh, 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 could you, I guess, as, as watching films and TV, you see these actors, you know, and you always wonder, like, what are they like in person? Uh, okay. Right. Because uh, there are some uh, actors that people say are just hard to work with. You know, their their ego, I guess, sometimes get in the way a little bit. You know, they got the trailer, you got the chair. You know, you don't. You know, they got the whole trailer and those type of things. Um, do you, Do you see some of that on set sometimes? You know, of course you do. I mean, you're gonna, right. you're, yeah, of course. I mean, you see, you know, people come from different backgrounds and mm -hmm. actors, same thing. I mean, uh, you know, you have to take things with a grain of salt, or at the very least, you yeah. have you have to understand where it's coming from. A lot right. of most, to be honest with you, the biggest actors are some of the sweetest people in the world. Wow, quite honestly, they are. They are. I mean, I've never really run across a lot of people that are you know that has been a bad experience for myself never have i mean and i mean of course when when you meet people you want to be respectful with them as well give them their right. strength as well you know and uh that's that's the most important thing i think is respect especially on the set i mean you know i it's res it's important for you to be respectful with everyone and then to respect you because that's what right. you you know uh but no, some of the biggest actors are just some some of the nicest people in the world. Quite honestly, I think what happens is a lot of times, you know, we 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 know we've seen them so much that we feel like we know them. You know, right. so we feel like we can we can come up to them and 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 you know talk to them or whatever, or we want to and or take a picture or whatever. And you know, sometimes they may be having a meal in the in in, in the uh, the restaurant or something, and you don't want to go up and bother them. You know, give right. them their face. You know but but yeah most of them are, are pretty pretty nice i think you know most of the time well, let's talk a little bit about production a little bit okay you know, being in different productions there's you've been in tv you've been in film mm -hmm. which yeah. is easier would you would you say to work with actually film is actually i, I think it's a little bit easier you've got okay. more time you have more time to give you more you have more time to work on it okay it takes longer i mean television television is actually pretty fast film you've got a little more time uh and it, it, it's just because it takes so long to to get scenes uh, right. filmed or whatnot so it just takes longer so you're maybe waiting you know maybe an hour while they set up the lights and everything for maybe you know one minute of dialogue kind right. of it takes a while to set up uh television is very fast television uh, they've got their schedule that they've got to finish. They've got maybe four scenes that day. So they're going to come in, they're going to do, uh, going to set you up. Uh, you come in in the morning, you go to makeup, then you go to your trailer and, you know, you put your wardrobe on and then you go to the set, they call you in and they, they, they block the show or whatever. And then they uh, make sure all the lights are set up and everything. It takes about, a, I want to say about a hundred people to do a scene. Okay, and television yeah a lot of people and they're all doing their job so they can get to the point to where you do your job as, right. as an actor you perform you say your lines you know everybody's working towards that moment so you as an actor have to really have your training and and, and you've got to know your lines you got to know your character you got to be ready because when it's your time you got to go you gotta do it. You just gotta, gotta do, do it. it. You gotta do it. There's a hundred people waiting around for you to do your job, or, or there's somebody else do, doing their job. You know, I've, I've learned. You know, since working on my TV show, uh -huh. the Cheaters production, there. So, so much goes into just the air outside. You know, the wind blowing a certain right. way. Right. Um, I forgot. I forgot what that terminology is, or something about what they call when they measure what the atmosphere is like, or something like that. With with um, 
And like, so if you don't get something shot in that day, it's really hard to come back and shoot it the next day because it's not going to be the same. You may not have the location the next day. Right. Maybe you've got the location just for that one day. So you've or got the, it. Su the sun's not shining the right way, or there's cloud clouds or right. raining, or, or a plane passes over. Right. And messes up the sound. You got to stop. You got to start all over again. Yeah. Those are the the elements that you have to deal with when you're when you're working outside. When you're in in on the set, it's a different story. Obviously, right. you have more control. But on television, like I said, you've got scenes you got to do you know so maybe as an actor you're lucky if you get three takes while you're working right. on a tv show that's you're lucky. An, an actor you gotta have it together you really do when they call you your really name up my goal is really all right you're up okay yeah you're, you're walking cool. through here and you got to say this line at this exactly. particular time exactly. say that that and you're done ready in television you cannot deviate from a script okay yeah they, they have they have script supervisor that if you say if your line is uh well i'm supposed to follow you and you go well and you don't say well you don't say well you go i'm supposed to follow you they'll cut the script, script supervisor will come up and say you forgot well the word well so okay let's take it again and they're very strict about every word has to be said as written they don't let you change it well yeah. it is it, it's said as written but it's also got to be you've got to go I need you. To, what do they say? Well, I need you to say it in this kind of way. I need you to say it kind of in a sad way. Yeah, you can. You can. That's yeah. your director telling you. Right. You know, and let's let, let's hear it this way. And right. that's that's great. I mean, I love direct. We all actors love direction. Right. You know, because we you want to give them what they want. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of times, television directors are very concerned because they have to be because of, of the technical, <laughs> and 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 uh, they work with the actors and whatnot, and they will let you know if that's what they want if they're giving you if you're giving them what they want okay right. at that point they they go okay all right a couple of shots and then once once they get what they want okay check the gate that means you know, check it why not okay well, okay let's move on and then they're going off to the next scene okay you're done but like i said you're lucky as an actor if you get three takes on the scene wow well i think mike gomez the actor all the way from hollywood usa california Thank you for being a part of our show today. Thank you for sharing your experiences on some of these films and TV shows that you're in. And of course, thanks for being my uncle. You're a great guy. I, and I love you so much, but thank you for your time today. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next time on Beyond Cheaters, the Detective Gomez Files. And be sure and visit me at DetectiveGomez.com. We'll see you next time.